In the Highlands and the Islands of Scotland are folk called crofters. These are people who do subsistence farming on small pieces of land, about 10 to 30 acres. They don't own their land, they pay a rent to a landlord, but they do keep them within the family and they pass them down from generation to generation. So come with me now north of Edinburgh through Perth and across the Grampians up to the northwest above the town of Ullapool and I'll tell you a crofter's tale. There was a burn, that's the Scottish word for a mountain stream. There was a croft owned by Jamie McNabb and a croft owned by Robbie McRae. The two crofts shared a boundary right down the middle between them and in the middle of that boundary was a huge boulder, a giant stone called a boundary stone. Now perhaps it was put there by the glaciers at the last ice age, if you believe that sort of thing. But if you ask the locals, they will tell you it was from the time of the giants. Jamie and Robbie were best neighbors and best friends. They worked hard on their land and took care of their families. And every evening when the weather allowed and it was nice enough, they would meet on the boundary stone and sit each on their side and have a nice chat and relive the hard work of the day. They grew old and within a few days of each other they passed away. And they were taken down the road and over the hill to the churchyard and buried side by side so they could continue their chats. The crofts passed down to their sons and they continued the tradition of working hard on the land, taking care of their livestock and their crops, taking care of their families, helping each other when there was a need. And every day that the weather permitted, they met together and sat on the boundary stone and had a nice chat. Sometimes they didn't chat at all. They just watched the sunset in silence. Well, those two grew very old and died within two days of each other. And those two were also taken down the road and over the hill and buried in the churchyard near their fathers. Now the crofts were handed to the grandsons, young Jamie and young Robbie, named after their grandfathers. They also continued the tradition of working hard on the land, taking care of the land and their families and feeding the families and helping each other when there was a need. And every evening when the weather allowed, they would come together and sit on their side of the boundary stone and share a bit of the end of the day. All was well until old Sandy came by one day. Old Sandy was 99, and his memory was twice that long and just as sharp as a tack. Anyone in the village or anywhere around that needed to remember anything about the history or the folk or the landscape would ask old Sandy because he could remember it all. And he came walking past young Jamie's croft one day and he started watching him work in the taddy field. And he began to rub his grizzled chin Jamie, there's a problem here with that boundary stone. That boundary stone used to be 20 feet closer to the burn. I think your neighbor Robbie is trying to steal your land. That's just not right. That boundary stone has been in the same place forever. Robbie wouldn't do that. We're best of friends. Why would you say such a thing? I'm just here to tell you that my long memory says that that stone used to be 20 feet closer to the burn. You can believe whatever you want, but uh, I think Robbie's trying to steal your land. And on he went down the road. The seed was planted. Young Jamie went to bed that night thinking about it. I didn't think he would ever do such a thing, but now that he mentions it, I, I think it was 20 feet closer to the burn. Why would he steal my land like that? That's, that's just horrible. And the more he thought, the more stirred up he got, the angrier he got. The next night, he hooked up his ox to the boundary stone and he pulled it 20 feet that direction. 
Well, of course, in the morning, young Robbie wakes up and sees that the stone's been moved, and he went to Jamie and said, what, What's going on here? What have you done? I know you're trying to steal my land. Don't try to hide it. I'm not a fool. That boundary stone was 20 feet closer to the burn, and you've tried to take it. I would never do such a thing, said Robbie. I would never do that to you. We're, we're friends and neighbors. The boundary stone has been in the same position for generations. Why in the world would I move it? I wouldn't do such a thing. Ah, I know you have. I know you have moved it. Don't deny it. Well, young Robbie went to bed that night and his seed was planted. And not only was he upset, but the wifey was upset. And she had one leg in the pants, so she was egging him on. You're not going to let him accuse us of that, are you? You're not going to let him get away with that, are you? So the next night, young Robbie got his ox and moved the boundary stone back. Well, you can see what was going to happen here. The next night, Jamie moved it 20 feet that direction. And it ended up that every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the stone moved 20 feet this direction. And every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, the stone moved this direction. And the only day it didn't move was Sunday. And that's because the two lads and the whole village were together in the church, listening to the minister preach about loving thy neighbor. Well, it became quite a fight in the village as well. People were taking sides, who was right, who was wrong. There were fights and brawls in the street, and there was even a betting pool as to who would give up first. It was Robbie. At last he threw his hands in the air and said, I quit, I quit, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. I have far more important things to do in my life than to move that stone forever. So you want 20 feet of my land, take it. Leave the stone where it is and you can have that 20 feet. It's the worst 20 feet of my croft anyway. So you can just have it. I'm not participating with the stone moving anymore. Young Jamie, who wasn't hearing it, no, nope, I don't trust you. I do not trust you. I know you're going to move that stone. I know you are. I'm going to watch you, and every time you move it, I'm moving it back. I'm putting it back. A week went by, and the whole village gathered together in the pub for a Kaylee, a celebration for a young couple who had just gotten married. And Robbie was on one side of the room and Jamie on the other. And of course the argument started back and forth and Jamie started accusing Robbie. You've moved that stone every night this week. I knew you would. I knew you would. You've done it. You said you wouldn't, but you've moved that stone every single night. I have done no such thing. I haven't touched that stone in a week, said Robbie. Why would I do it? I already gave you the land. I wouldn't move it. And just about that time, the pub doors burst open and in came old Sandy, huffing and puffing and a little bit panicked and hollering at the top of his lungs. Hurry, hurry, everyone, come quick, come quick, you must, you've got to come see this. You've got to come see the boundary stone. It's walking. What? Well, of course, they all poured out of the pub and down the road to the croft. And sure enough, the boundary stone was walking. It had eight legs like a giant spider. And when it got back to its original position and laid down on the ground, four ghostly figures came up. The ghosts of the fathers and the grandfathers of the two lads. And young Jamie's grandfather, grandfather Jamie, the ghost came right up to him into his face with his ghostly breath and he said, leave the stone alone. It's where it's always been. Old Sandy has forgotten about the big storm so many years ago when the flood came down the mountain and moved the burn 20 feet. Leave the stone alone so we can get some rest. And the four ghosts turned and walked down the road and over the hill, chatting like they always had done, back to the churchyard. The stone is still there in the original position to this day. 
and it seems like the only one who didn't quite get the story right was Sandy. Because even with his long memory, he had forgotten about the storm and the flood and the burn moving 20 feet. Or maybe he hadn't forgotten. Maybe he totally remembered and he really just wanted to see what kind of drama and excitement and entertainment he could create. We may never know the truth of it. <laughs>